Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Uh, I really appreciate Proppy inviting me to be here again. I spoke here two years ago, a uh, little different room, and boy, these lights are bright. I cannot see you all at all, so I hope you can see me. <laughs> um, my name is Steve Streetman. Uh, my background, I had a career as a data scientist. I did terrorism risk assessments. I did uh, uh, stock and bond selection, artificial intelligence for that. I've done soybean genetic analysis. I've done a lot of different work, sense integration, that sort of thing. I started investing in real estate more around 2004 and joined a group called the National Council of Exchangers, which are people who trade real estate. So like, I'll give you my house and a $300,000 note for your fourplex. Very, very creative deal making. In 2017, I was about to a cryptocurrency for land, a direct trade. When grew, I did some diligence, you know, what it was put in the bank. <laughs> I mean, I figured out where that as well, what it was going. I was really excited about it. I managed to construct and do the transaction, which I had to teach the type of company how to do it. We had to make up a process. So uh, how long does it be because of the process? So uh, we now just close a free exchange to the direct trade. And I'm so interested in the synergy between real estate and capital curves of everything I could find, which in 2017 was much. Over time, I saw the different kinds of things you can do for cleaning them. I ended up writing a book, Cryptocurrency and Real Estate, which I published a couple of years ago. Uh, we'll have a couple of copies available over the signature app, which you can learn to study. And I continue to consult with various token and nation companies and looking at the various different opportunities for real estate and cryptocurrency. And today, when I, uh, when Proppy reached out to me and asked if I could speak to this conference, yeah, I saw it was Web3 and property rights. So as soon as I saw property rights, the the uh, the graphic that's on this next slide popped into my head. And so we thought about talking about what city of ownership and what we're going to attempt to be able to do in order to put my head on blockchain. So you probably can't read this picture. Picture comes from uh, Walter Zeckendorf, who is a famous developer out of New York City, in Chicago. And this is uh, kind of a map of a building from New York City, but it's an ownership, but it's an ownership map. So take a look at this. You will see. You will see that there were three red locks. These simple ownership and those three locks. On top, of those, on top of those three lots, he throws a ground lease, a master ground lease. But then there's another ground lease, parcel A, parcel B, on top of the master ground lease. So it's a sub ground lease. On top of that, he goes to the public, which is something you want to do, right? And you can see there's a bunch of units in the middle, and they're all kind of the main line. So each one of those units can be individually sold. Beyond that, this is New York City. Air routes are a thing. So he sells the airline separately for parcel A and parcel B. But also when you're in a city, you go under direct. You want to you have the word access, right? Because there's a lot of things that go on under the ground in New York City. Like there's subways, there's utilities, there's all kinds of other types of accessing you know, might have. And he's divided up all of those, but we're not done yet. Let's say you have common name. You might, own you might own that common name, and then you might lease it to someone. And that somebody might sublease someone else. And of course, you got on a mortgage on that uh, common name. So there's a lean against that, and maybe there's a second lien. Oh, oh and maybe didn't hear HOA fees and HOA lien. So there's all kinds of different things. And in every single one of these things I'm talking about, it, is a claim on ownership of this property. You can hypothecate, you can read and hypothecate, you can sell pieces, you can sell auctions, you can do all kinds of things. And even, you, and even when you look at ownership, say that, to say that I own a property, well, how do I own the property? Is it fee simple? Is it tenants in common? Is it a right of survivorship? There's a lot of different ways to own property and different ways to, and you can own it in different entities. I can own it personally, I can own it in an LLC, I can own it in a trust, I can own it in a land trust. So when, we start so when we start moving title to the blockchain, ideally, we would be able to natively handle all these different kinds of ownership. 
So many times, right? Many times, right? Ownership, leases, subleases, options. You have lender liens, you could have tax liens, you can have mechanics or HOA liens. There might be easements that people would have access to different parts of the property. And in fact, if you own a condominium unit, how many people here own a condominium unit? What do you own? You know, what do you own? You typically own down to the studs. So behind the studs, above the ceiling, below the floor, you don't own that. That's common area property. But you probably have a fractional ownership interest in all the common area property. Right, so now we have all these ownership interests. We want to be able to handle those. How do we do it now? Well, basically, there are two kinds of title systems in the world. Um, there's a Torrens title system, which I want to talk about first. Now, in a Torrens title system, you say, okay, look, I don't care whatever happened in the past. We're setting a date and a time, and all the claims need to be adjudicated. We're going to put something in the title system, and this now is official title. And from here on out, we have a chain that we can rely upon for title ownership. Um, this is a really good model for blockchain title because blockchain title is exactly these sorts of title chains. But if you look at this, only 10 US states actually use a Torrens title system and only really a few countries. Most places use an abstract title system. This is the abstract in the same way that an abstract painting is abstract. Okay. Um, there aren't any real title things. You have individual recordings of various types of stuff that may or may not actually be officially recorded and may or may not actually be in some sort of common database. And then when you buy the property, you'll see that your, uh, your title company does a title search. And if they do a really good job, they're going to find all of the things that are actually written down and recorded in all of the usual places. And then they will take that and summarize that in something called title abstract. And then you get to look at that and you get to see what they found uh, might be issues with title. That's great. And if they do a really good search, it's probably a pretty solid title. But there's absolutely no way to know if it's complete. So this is really challenging. There's, there's a risk of unknown claims. So ideally, we'd be under a Torrance title system, but let's face it, we're probably going to get stuck with an abstract title system just have to work with it. So what could it be, though? Let's suppose we start recording title on the blockchain. Well, so you can see at the bottom here, there's a blockchain at the bottom. It's, I've kept it ambiguous so that we don't care what blockchain it is, right? Uh, but we actually really, really do care what blockchain it is. I'll talk about that in a few minutes. So the house might be on there as an NFT, and technically, it would probably be an LLC owning the house, and the NFT represents ownership in the LLC. And then you can record a whole bunch of different things based with the house. So you might record a mortgage lien on the blockchain. You might record a lease. You might have that lien released. You refinance, you release the first lien, record another lien. All those things go in the blockchain. It's very nice and neat. They're all tied to the address. It's all simple and easy. Of course, you could have different kinds of ownership. So the ground ownership, the building ownership, the mineral rights, the air rights, if there's condominium rights, if there's anything else that's out there. Um, you could have that also recorded as NFTs that can have individual owners. But open your minds. There's so much more we could do if we actually have an NFT that represents the property. Now we can throw in digital twins. We can have its exact location, in fact, the neighborhoods around it. You can have images of the home, floor plans of the home, all the permits that were ever done, all the renovations that were ever done, uh, all the insurance claims that were ever made. That information is really worth preserving for future owners. And with blockchain and additional information there, this becomes a natural way of actually capturing all of this information for future owners and future generations. If you're building property, I mean, let's face it, real estate is around for a while. It doesn't go away. That's the point of it. So the, the house might burn down or get destroyed by a hurricane or something, but the land's still going to be there and the ownership is still going to be there 
five years from now, five years from now, ten years from now, a hundred years from now, maybe even a thousand years from now, if the oceans don't rise, uh, so you should still be good. Now, I also note here that they can possibly tokenize, and in this case, I mean actually fractionalize the ownership of the house. So if you have the NFT, now you can go in and you can say, I'm going to issue fractional shares owning that NFT, and now you have ways of having only part of the house. And I want to talk in a few minutes about why that might be really important to you. So what could the future of Tidal look like? And now let's dream a little bit. This is what we really could get to because of the technology of blockchain and, and crypto. What if we had a global Tidal system that was actually independent of national or local governments? If we start recording Tidal on a publicly decentralized blockchain, and if people start to look to that blockchain for ownership instead of looking to the county title records, at some point, that blockchain becomes the title of record. And what could that do to defang some of the authority of governments worldwide to be able to steal property or to be able to take it without unlawfully? Right now, if a government wants to take your property unlawfully, they can just record something, and if they have enough juice, that'll get recorded and it'll be all done. What if that government had to petition this globally decentralized blockchain and prove that they had a right to do whatever it is they want to do to title? That would really straighten a lot of them out, wouldn't it? So the other thing, of course, is we can have rich, immersive data about properties. Uh, visual tours, digital twins, there's all kinds of things that could be kept about properties to maintain historical value, uh, to be able to recreate historical value, to be able to do insurance claims, to be able to prove what the property looked like when you went to insurance claims. There's a lot of things that can be useful to owners all the way through throughout that aren't recorded now and could be recorded if we had a blockchain. So, so what this also provides is immutability and I'll call it definiteness. You know what you own, you know what's there, it's all laid out. If you can capture all the ownership records, you know, if you go buy a house in Texas right now, do you own the mineral rights? Chances are pretty good you don't, but it's not gonna show up in your title search, or it might not. Because a lot of those things were separate leases that aren't necessarily recorded anywhere, so you might not really, really know. It would be really nice to know exactly what you own, what you didn't own. So, so, how can we get there? Because, I mean, that's kind of a future. It's kind of a dream. It'd be kind of cool. It'd be really nice to have your ownership really be immutable. It'd be really nice to know exactly what you own. It'd be really nice to preserve some of the basic features of your property. So, what a lot of people are trying to do is to convince jurisdictions to implement and a few jurisdictions have done pilot projects to put title on the blockchain, but it's not going to work. Let me tell you why it's not going to work. If you're a government and you're going to put your title and your ownership on a blockchain, you don't want to lose control of that blockchain. That's going to be a private, permissioned blockchain that you as a government have complete control over. So you, it's not an immutable ownership anymore. You, can, you actually can go change it. The reason why you can't go change, say, Bitcoin is because it is decentralized and you have to actually do a proof of work to redo the whole chain. And that gets really, really hard, especially if you have to go further back than you know, a few blocks. But if you have a private a private blockchain where you really own all the examples of it, you can just change it. So you lose a lot of the value of putting these in the blockchain if you have private permission. I think of that similar in the same way that CBDCs are to cryptocurrencies. I think government jurisdiction, private property in the blockchain will be to a true blockchain title. So, so, you know, CBDCs, you yeah, don't have to, I don't have to tell this crowd how dangerous those could be in terms of the control, the digital control government will have over what you can do. The same thing would happen with private property.
So the other alternative is to build on top of an existing ownership system. I must be really heavy. This is all creaking underneath my feet. Uh, and this is this is what property is doing, right? They're creating a blockchain. They still reference the underlying title in the jurisdictional's title chain. It makes perfect sense. They have 300,000 properties. I was blown away when I heard that figure. And uh, Natalia and her team have done amazing work on this. But if you build on top of an ownership system, one of the first keys is everybody has to know what blockchain you're building on. And the reason why that's the case is because, you know, uh, you could go and put your property on, say, Ethereum. And I could go build an equivalent title on Solana. And now somebody wants to go check. How do they know which one is the real title? You really need a blockchain of record, at least, so that you no longer, you don't get this proliferation of potential title searches to go across blockchains. Because frankly, most of the blockchains don't really uh, cross-reference with each other and may not be able to cross-reference with each other. So you need an official blockchain. The core ownership will remain constant. So the idea is that it goes into an LLC and heck, let's just make sure that LLC continues to own that property forever. And all you're doing is you're changing ownership of the LLC. And then from there on, the tracking of the owners and the tracking of the rights can be done on the blockchain. So this really creates a new form of ownership. And so it also enables us to think about new forms of ownership. And so this is not really potential. And I don't want to talk about this in too much detail, but uh, this has been a sort of a theoretical talk about how you might do this sort of stuff. But I'm a real believer in putting your money where your mouth is. So we are in the process of launching a community. We're building a small city near Austin, Texas. We're expecting to have the official launch later this quarter. We're going to be building about three to 5,000 dwelling units, commercial, industrial, infrastructure, all kinds of stuff with the city. We intend to tokenize all of it, to put everything in the blockchain, and actually to have the ability for fractional ownership of everything using security token offerings for each property. We believe that through fractional ownership, we have the ability to unlock a path to affordable housing for people in the area, which we're really, really interested in doing. And uh, so, let me, so if you're if you're all interested in that, uh, the community is called Jevity, and that I, I, I probably shouldn't have put three QR codes in the same slide. You guys have to navigate that. But the Jevity community that will get you to a place. It will ask for your information and how you might be interested in working with us. And then it will give you, uh, if you give that, it will send you an executive summary of the project. Uh, if you want my book, um, there are a few copies outside that I could sign for you if you want it today. If not, you can go to Amazon and that QR code will go there. And please connect with me. I'm on LinkedIn. And uh, that would be one of the best places to actually learn about what's going on with this and everything else I'm doing. When we're creating a new ownership model, we're talking about something we call a stewardship model. So if you say, is that owning or is it renting? And the answer is no. It has some components of renting, some components of owning. We believe that everybody who lives in our community should be able to build some equity. And you know, if you're not starting off with much, you may not be building much equity to start. If you're starting off with more, you maybe have more equity to start. But everybody gets on an equity path. And we just think that's going to be a way to do it. Stewardship is almost a cross between renting, owning, owning, and property managing. And so uh, that's also something if you're interested in, you feel free to contact me. And uh, I have 46 seconds left in my talk. So I have time I think, for one question. I may not be able to see a hand, so you may have to shout out. Is there already any questions? Going. 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 All right. I will be outside to sign. Uh, yes, gentlemen, ask really quickly. 
So you asked if I'm the, so you asked if I'm the only one in this space right now. Uh, well, obviously, Prop is in this space right now. They do title on the blockchain. There are many, many people who do uh, tokenization, but almost all of them do it at a very small level with very few properties. So we will be finding teammates to work with in all this. And, uh, you know, some people in this room in here. Just remember, there's a dream about being able to do asset tokenization and it's being able to have ownership be immutable and i mean it's the properties of what this is it's not necessarily the specifics or the nuts and bolts of it let's keep that dream alive and let's continue to pursue, continue to pursue it uh, even in the space of some obstacles thank you very much